now we want to know two things. We're going to do part A and B for number four. So here's the deal. The roller coaster is at the top, and it's going to roll all the way to the bottom here. And we want to know what the speed will be here at the bottom. So let's note a couple things. Number one, the height of this coaster is bigger than zero. In fact, let's be clear, the height of this coaster is actually twice the radius. Let's be clear, so here's the coaster. And if the radius is 15 meters, then the total height is 30 meters. That's one important point I wanna make. So if we have height, that means we automatically have gravitational energy. The other thing is that we have a speed, and that implies that we have kinetic energy. Now at the bottom of this loop, yes, we have a gravitational force, but we have no height. So that force is storing no energy. I'm being a little sloppy with my language here, but I'm going to say it that way. This force isn't storing any energy, um, given the position of the, the car, or rather, the car isn't storing any gravitational energy given that it's on the ground. So we don't have EG. We do have a speed greater than zero, which means we have EK. Now I'm going to label a couple things. I'm going to call this EK at the top, and I'm going to call this EK at the bottom, because they're going to be different numbers. Now the formula that I'll actually give you in this problem is that E initial actually equals E final. And so that's a given formula. It's going to be up to you to distinguish. Um, all right. So EG plus EK equals EK at the bottom. Let me label this. So this is the top, and this is the bottom. All right. So. Now I can plug in my formula. So formulas that I would give you, you will be given the fact that EG is MGH and that EK is one half MV squared. That I will give you. So now what you'll end up getting here with your numbers is MGH plus one half MV, and you know what? I'm just gonna, sorry. MGH plus one half M, you'll see why I'm doing this in a second, V at the top squared equals one half m v at the bottom squared. Okay. Now the m's actually all cancel. I can divide those out. So I'm going to get 10 times 30 plus one half, and v at the top is going to be this number that I actually obtained right here. And I need V at the top squared, which is this 150 that I had before. So I have 1 half times 150 equals 1 half times V bottom squared. And so I'm going to have 300 plus 75 equals V bottom squared divided by 2. So I have 375 times 2 is v bottom squared. So v at the bottom is going to be the square root of this number here. And we'll actually end up getting, it's actually the square root of 750. And that ends up being 27.4 meters per second. So that's the answer to part A. Now, part B, let's go ahead. We'll do the free body diagram. So we have the normal and the weight. So we have these two forces competing, and the effect is that we're going to get mv squared divided by r. I'm doing this a little bit quickly now, um, because I want you to be able to sort of break this down. Normal equals mg plus mv squared divided by r. And we're told it's 40 kilograms in the problem. So that's going to be 400 right here, because that's 40 times 10, plus m. And v squared divided by r, well, we know that v squared is 750 from above. 
and the radius is 15, and this is 40 right here. So the normal is going to be 400 plus um, 2,000. So I'm getting a normal force of 2,400 newtons. So that's part B.